Ice Wall Mantle has pretty much been a meme at this point in game, considering how Bungie released them. Being able to create an overshield on demand is great for that extra layer of protection, and it's always nice to have when you play the most daunting of contents around. But for some reason, that's where the exotic ends and where the memes come through. It was a terrible exotic when first released, and no one, except the mad lads, would use the item at all. Until now, of course. Now, they have been buffed through one of the most simplest things that should have been there since day one. Now, you can deactivate them at will, which means that you won't be a easily targeted punching bag for all. So, with the new effect in game, I decided to make them endgame worthy since their effects are more versatile to use compared to before. And what I've created shows that too much defense is never an issue, and Behemoth subclass is very slept on for endgame content. Now, enough of me talking, and do me a big favor if you can, and leave me a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications to never miss out on content as it really does help me out with growing my content and channel in general. To start with the subclass, we will be using the Behemoth, and what's currently shown on the screen is ideally what you want to be aimed for as well. Your grenades will need to be Glacier so we can make use of the shards that are produced and the Whispers of Chain resist effects while near them within the build. And although Duskfield is more faster, they take a tiny bit longer with freezing a target, which is what we don't want. We need something instant to start the process off. Next, you want to have Howl of Storm so that we can create even more glaciers on demand when you need it, and then pair this up with none other than the Tectonic Harvest aspect for creating shards. Your fragment should be as followed now. Whispers of Shards so that every time we destroy a glacier, we get a boost in grenade regen speed. Whispers of Fissure so that every time we destroy any forms of frozen targets, they deal more damage at a larger radius. Whisper of Rhyme so that every time we collect a shard, we are granted an overshield. And then Whispers of Change for whenever we are near a shard, we get a damage resistance of 25%. So from what we have commonly, it's simple. Every time we destroy a glacier, we are getting a overshield per shard collected, increased grenade energy, and damage resistance while staying near any frozen battens. On paper, that is pretty sweet for surviving a GM level sniper kit from a vandal if you have no sniper resistance mods on, but it's still not enough. I require max efficiency, or we go bust. So, I've added in the raw Pakula hand cannon with headstone so that we can produce even more glaciers as we go, and I highly recommend you farm this, or the Iron Banner version sidearm with the headstone perk as it boosts the performance of stasis builds by 90%. We then have the Orbs of Restoration for that extra gain in energy and ability energy upon collecting Orbs of Power. Absolution for even more ability cooldown. Protective Light, so we can survive lethal hits even at critical health. Passive Guard for reducing damage while near combatants. The Laminate Exotic Sword, because screw you, that's why. And lastly, the Iceform Mantle Exotic itself. Overall, you should become unkillable since we are packing pure defense, and in any RPG setting that allows you to do so, will become an instant hit. But it's Destiny, and that's a different ballgame. What it does allow you to do though, is become more confident in taking damage wherever you go as your health won't take an instant hit until it reaches through to your shields first. It might not be super strong in environments where you've been blasted out from all angles, but it definitely will take a few more hits than normal to actually down you, which is, like I said, very handy. So now, let's look at the weaponry, as that should accompany the build itself. We have the Volber Cooler Hand Cannon with Shoot to Loot and Headstone, which like I mentioned earlier, will help push Stasis to be more valuable wherever you go. The Hand Cannon is good for its high precision damage, so you can use that to take out minor and major combatants quicker, compared to the Iron Banner version which has less range and damage but fights a bit more faster. However, both are as viable as each other and have served me well with the following build. For secondary, I have the Tyranny of Heavenbone with Firefly, and this is mainly for taking on the Overload Captains and then slowly marching my way to their ultimate death with my Heavy. And jokes aside, it's a good weapon to have with the build as the explosion created from it can clear out runes and combatants in one burst. Now, this can be very effective when you freeze a combatant and then detonate them with the perk, as the Whispers of Fisher perk will kick in and cause even more damage to those caught within this blast, so two blasts in one. Now, handy against mages or ultras who are a pain to deal with. If you of course prefer more damage against mini bosses though, then the point of the stacked bow is with the one you want to main and carry, or even any bow with warp or perk is suitable for the build as well. For heavy, we have the Lament Sword which is perfect for reducing the incoming damage, but also being able to deal a huge amount of damage in seconds. 
And pairing this up with the passive guard mod makes the build a perfect offense and defense build if you ever want to close a gap against Compaton safely. It's one of the best swords to use for a build like this, and one of the most effective for bringing into end game, especially for the fact that it can use anti barrier, which frees up a mod slot. Alternatively, the Crown Splitter Sword with Vorpal is another weapon to use if you want sheer damage and just want to destroy champions to bosses in a few hits. Although much slower than the Lament, it's one of the best Titan Focus Swords you'll want to at least have a few versions of, as it can come with some good perks to support it. Nonetheless, both these weapons are perfect for high end game content, and just experimenting with what is available will net you with a lot of viable information to decide which weapon is best to take in for whatever activity you decide to use it in. For the stats, our main focus is both discipline and resilience, as both these two stats will be the backbone of the entirety of the build once in motion. Now, how you break this down will be down to your personal choice and needs, and as bumping both stats up to max is ideal, you may have to support another area if you don't balance your stats out properly, for example a low recovery level. So for me, I focus on bumping up my discipline to around 90 so we can get our grenades back faster. Although we have fragments such as Whispers of Shards on hand to help boost this area, we won't always have the time or place to quickly create a glacier to use. Also, considering that Bungie did a major rework around how some abilities work, it's even more important to max this stat out if you want to get the best of the best. I have added in the element of shards mod so that every time we collect a shard it will count as a well instead, which will amplify how our ability energy regeneration will be broken down. We then have the orbs of restoration mod and absolution mod who will both grant us ability energy via orbs of power collected as well. Now do remember, we have the headstone perk so that will be coming in handy, alternatively you can get the demolitions perk instead which would, to be honest, make more sense. Now except from orbs of restoration and absolution, your resilience stat does not need any other mod to support its class ability cooldown since it can be easily obtained via high stat armor. In fact, you should at least have one piece or a set of armor stored that have a nearly maxed out stat for each stat you have. You can, however, add in the Well of Utility and Reap and Wellmaker mod as both work together with each other where Utility will grant you class ability energy while Reaping will allow you to create a Void Bomb upon using your class ability. Although, if you wish to play it safe, then you can simply just add on the supercharged mod to increase the number of charges with light you store, which will increase how much defense you get once pit of light is active, so that's pretty cool as well. Leftover wise, we have the elemental charge for activating protective light, hands on for gaining super energy via powered melee hits, power preservation for creating more orbs of power while using our super, elemental armaments for increased weapon damage depending on the subclass being used, sword reserves for more sword ammo to keep, and passive guard for reduced damage while surrounded and having a sword equipped it. Now as we have covered the main topics of what makes the setup, here on the mods we have and how they will overall affect the build, all compiled into one. For headwear discipline, power preservation, hands on and element to charge mod, arm we have discipline and supercharge mod, chest we have discipline, sword reserves, concussive dampener and element of armors mod, a leg we have discipline, Absolution, Orbs of Restoration, and Elemental Shards mod. Mark with Mind Recovery, Passive Guard, and Protective Light mod. Now, if you have reached this point of the video, then congratulations as you now have a fun build capable of stacking overshields, causing a large amount of damage, and becoming a raid boss yourself. Now, I thoroughly enjoy trying this build out, as Iceborn Mantle is one of the many unique exotics in game that offer a change up to what we always get but always falling short because of the disadvantages applied to them. The animation it does is really cool and deactivating now also looks like your soul just left your body and if you listen just hard enough, you can hear some whispers coming from it which is pretty damn amazing as a side effect. Since its adjustment, the ability to turn on and off the exotic has been handy for allowing players to survive just a bit more longer whenever and wherever you go. Barricades are still powerful in themselves, but you now have two options as to how you like to use your class ability, and this not only allows more depth to the build you have in mind, but it's all on demand, so no need to kill a target to activate it or such. And what makes this auto even more useful is that it will stack on top of other overshields you have, so you'll be getting nearly double the defense you already have. This means that I can go ahead and use Top Tree Void with its overshield effects and play aggressive in close quarter fighting with a ton of overshields available. Using the build how it is though is the main way I would recommend everyone to use as you're getting more bang for your buck. 
Stasis Behemoth is a very tanky class that can disrupt fights easily thanks to its spending super effect. Upon use of all the fragments effects we have, everything will be kicking in and we can call a ton of havoc until everything comes to control. With the number of glaciers created, we will be pretty much resisting incoming damage non-stop and even when that's gone, we can use our weapons to create more. It's a self-sufficient tank build which is capable of providing non-stop damage resistance as long as you're creating the necessary components to it. It may not pack a huge bump in damage, although that can be rearranged, and it may not be able to support itself properly when being damaged by all sorts of incoming damage, which I found that the ones that do AoE damage tend to be the most annoyingest to counter. It does however support the user by providing as much defense as possible while having contingency plans put in place in case a one level protection goes down. Can it be used in GMs? Sure, but it won't be designed for supporting a team which is a major aspect of clearing most GMs. It is however overall fun to main and use when you tried out everything else and I highly recommend you try out Icefall Mantle now with the new update to it. One last thing though, just don't use this in PvP with the sweet business as it's already toxic as itself and I can only take so much stress in a day. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny news and content. Once again thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all next one.